This is Pastor Debbie Casing with Lifeline Church, and this is Kingdom News Now, and it's time for you to testify. There's no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be, no place I would rather be. Than here in your love, than here in your love, there's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Than here in your love, than here in your love. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Kingdom News Now. It's so good to have you on the program and here with us tonight in the in the studio. We feel like you're sitting right here with us tonight in the studio, and it's such a privilege to be coming into your home tonight as well. Amen. And I kind of feel like a stranger sitting here. I hadn't been in here, in here in the month of May. Lisa did a tremendous job taking care of the program for us uh, throughout the month, talking to the ladies and pastors' wives and, and women and the matters of their heart. And, and we had a wonderful time around here. Every week we recorded the, the program in the month of May, the month of June. Amen. We're going to be talking about men and making men of honor and talking about fathers and dads and and how do we go about doing these things and and how do we make a mighty man out of us. And some of us some of us are much more challenged in that area than <laughs> others. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But but the making of a leader. Amen. We want to talk about some of these things throughout the month of, of June, and we may hit a little bit of all of it tonight uh, with us, but we're going to really talk tonight about raising spiritual sons. Uh, and this is for those that's already been leaders and, and, and in the leadership uh, of, of, the, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and we have in the studio with us one of our best friends, and not only just a good friend, but one of, our, 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 one of the greatest anointed teachers that I've ever met and ever known sitting here with us. He's on our board at Kingdom Life Ministries. He's a tremendous man, pastor, man of God, amen, and so good to have Pastor Haskell Martin back on the program with us. Thank you, sir. Amen, and we've al we always look forward to, to when we can uh, uh, share together and have you on the program, and, and uh, we always gain insight and, uh, from the <laughs> Word and, and just the anointing that's on you to teach the Word of God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. We... Uh, uh, we're, we're excited again to have you with us tonight, amen. We're going to share some things tonight with you that I believe will bless you, amen. Why don't you just go to the phone and call your friends and family and neighbors and let them know Kingdom News Now is on the air. We're going to talk to some men tonight and talk about men, amen. So that don't mean, that don't leave you out, ladies. You need no. to watch the program as well, amen, because you need to help, amen, your man. Amen. Amen. Just Amen. like I, I told the men last month, or Lisa told the men last month, that uh, the men need to help their women. Help, they need yes. to help their ladies and their wives. Yes. Amen. And we need, to, uh, we need your help, ladies. Amen. We can't be who God called us to be without you. And I mean that. Uh, so Amen. we're going to share some things tonight with yes. you. And, and so we're just excited about... Uh, just to just to be back here with you tonight, Amen. I I love what we're doing here at Kingdom News, and I trust and hope that you're blessed by it each week. I know many of you see us during the week, and you mention to me that you watch the program, and 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 you say that you know it blesses you and all, and so we trust that it does, and and that you that you grow closer and maybe a stronger uh, strengthen your relationship with Christ. But we want to talk to Pastor Haskell. Pastor, you just got back from the Philippines just yes. a few days ago. Yes. And I know you always have a wonderful time there. I know your heart is <laughs> torn sometimes between here and there. Yes, it is. Had a, had a tremendous trip to the Philippines this time, the longest trip I've ever had, six weeks. Wow. Left on uh, March 30 and arrived back into Tulsa on May 9. And there's a tremendous work going on there mm -hmm. that I have the privilege and the honor of being a part of. And uh, working on the island of Mindanao, mm -hmm. uh, probably considered the southern half of Mindanao. But this time it was concentrated in the General Santo City area. And God moved mightily. The Filipino people are so hungry for the Word of yes. God and the, 
and the manifestation of the Spirit of God. And we've seen uh, salvations. We've seen healings. We've seen deliverances. Wow. And, uh, you know, the first thing people ask is, how many were saved? Well, to be right honest, I don't sit there and count them. Right. But I know this time they said there was between 80 and 100 that were saved. Over 30 youth at a youth convention uh, had people walking into a church that had never been to the church. You had to get to the church intentionally mm -hmm. because it was kind of rough. The church is situated in a field. Ten people walked into the church that night, had never been to the church. Wow. And they all come forward to receive Jesus Praise as God. their Lord. But what I was after was, will you be back Sunday? It was on a Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Sunday they was back. The next Wednesday night they was back. The next Sunday they was back. So they're establishing a relationship. Amen. But and, it's... And, and let me say yeah. real quick, that's what it's about. I mean, oh, of course yeah. you, you want to you see souls saved. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. What, you know, that's what we want to do yes. wherever we go. But, yes. but it's not just about the numbers no. as to how many we can see saved in our ministry. No. Uh, I know Irwin and Tess are doing a tremendous work oh, there, yes. and Pastor Irwin and, yes. and them. And, and but as the, as the new people come in, just what you said, the family of ten people came in. Yes. Now they can disciple them. Yes. And raise them up. Yes. This was at a church in Palamalok, uh, Philippines. There, I have the privilege of now being a part of the ministry, uh, being a part of the board, and. Uh, so we communicate uh, through Internet, but they, uh, they have people giving them plots of land wow. in different areas, signing it over to them so that they can establish a church there. Wow. They have pastors and what they call pastors, the ladies, in training for a year before they set them as a pastor. Mm -hmm. awesome. the, the wife is trained to be a school teacher, and they're teaching kindergarten age children in these villages that don't have any access to public schools and I watch this and I see the heart and we'll get into the spiritual sons but Irwin and Tess Yahoma there is uh, my spiritual children I'm honored to be dad to them but we'll get into that later but it's amazing to see what God is doing Amen. but God has promised us great promises from his word he said that signs and wonders will follow yes. his word and there's too many people in the world today in the church today that are following signs and wonders yeah. and that's not god's plan signs and wonders yeah the signs and wonders are to follow us he says mercy and grace shall yeah. follow you all the days yeah. of your yeah. life they're twins that follow us they don't lead us they follow right. us right and and i think probably that God is preparing some great things for the church in America. But what, what blesses me is that God has, I told God I'll go anywhere in the world you want me to go. Amen. But I'm asking for what I see happen in the nations that I'm privileged to travel to. I want to see it happen in our church in Anderson, Amen. Missouri, but also in the churches of America. Amen. And we see this. We see the healings. There's a man come forth in a service there that he had had uh, uh, arthritis and his hands were like this. He could not open mm -hmm. his hands. Mm -hmm. And and I thought, God, what do I do here? And the Spirit of God said, I want you to just start rubbing his hands. So I just started rubbing the hands. Amen. And pretty soon he started like this and, 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 and like this. And his hands are beginning like this. Within about five minutes, his hands was open like this. And he's walking back to his seat in the congregation showing everybody like this. He's showing his hands to everybody. Yes. <laughs> And I said, God, Hallelujah. you're so good to us. Yes. You yes. have so much for us. Amen. But it seems like here so many churches are pushing him away. Yeah. And, and I don't want to see that. God is preparing his people Amen. in the United States yes, of America, in the churches here, people. God has great preparation. His word Amen. is true. His promises are true. Amen. Let's don't push him away. Let's draw closer yes. to you. Amen. Him, he says, if you will humble yourself and come before me, then will you see Amen. me. Amen. And 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 I, 
I want this. I want to see it in the churches you know, of America. You know, you, you mentioned, and you hadn't even told us about that particular mm -hmm. miracle mm -hmm. with the hands, with the, mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with the fellow with the hands, yeah. the arthritis in his hands and such. We witnessed that very miracle mm -hmm. in Honduras uh -huh. uh, with yes. a lady just a few years ago when yes. we were in Honduras. We witnessed that same exact miracle. Mm -hmm. Her hands were drawn, closed, yes. where she yes. could not open them. Yes. And, and Lisa, my wife, uh, took her hands and, and I have to lay the microphone down to, to, to show you this, but uh -huh. do her hands that way. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. She would take her hand and do her hands that way and open her uh -huh. hands. And as soon as she would take her hand off the lady's hands, they would close right, right back up. Right. And we prayed the prayer of faith and watched God do that same yes. miracle in yes. Honduras. You know, he's no respect of person. No. And the truth is no. he wants to do those things right here yes. in America. Yes. You know, and, and yes. but we have to we have to have that hunger that they have and there is a tremendous hunger yeah. in many, many third world countries. Oh yeah, yeah. Than what there is here in America. Well, here in America we have the means of transportation. Yeah. If I don't like what the pastor said here, I'll go over to this go other church. Go find another church. Yeah. And there's so many people that are called to a church that have been in that church, God has moved in their behalf, God has done a great work in their behalf, but they got offended over some little thing, yes. and they went to another place, and I have people tell me, I know where I'm supposed to be in church at, and I said, then why aren't you why there? Why aren't you there? And I know what it is. They've said so much against that church and that pastor that yeah. they're embarrassed to go out. People, repent and get back where yes. you're supposed to be Amen. and start doing, get submitted to that man of God. I want to put a plug in here, if I may. Okay. You can edit this out if you want to. But Pastor Curtis True at the church at Sykes and Church on the Rock, we had just had a tremendous service. God moved mightily. through the, He came in and just practically slayed everybody in the spirit. Amen. And I'm just wiped out. I'm drenched. I'm soaking wet. And they jerk off a T-shirt off of me, put a dry one on, and I went to a room that they had prepared for me. And my cell phone went off. And on this, I opened it up, and Pastor Curtis True had sent me a text message. He said, I'm praying for your service wow. today. Wow. And you know what I did? I sent him back a text. Your prayers have been answered. Amen. Thank God for a Amen. man of God like this that will hook up and support ministers Amen. and pastors in what they're called to do. Amen. They don't need a pastor in the Philippines. They got a pastor. Yes. And they call me an apostle. They call me that. I don't call me Amen. anything but a man of God. But I know that God has called me to go there, but I also have the privilege of working with ministries in about eight or ten other different countries over the Internet. Amen. Amen. And there's a hunger. I want to see that hunger come back to yes. our country here. And yes. I'm not saying that it's not in some churches. Right. But I want to see the churches of America return to God. Amen. And, and, and people, it's not about serving man. It's not about serving that pastor. That's that right. pastor is called to lead you into the things of God. And a little bit later on, we may get into some things right. that God has been ministering to me and what God spoke to me the first of this year. But Amen. I'm telling you, God is wanting to do something in yes. the churches of America if we will let him do it. Amen. Amen. Absolutely he is. Uh, you know, if you've just joined us on the program Kingdom News Now tonight, we're talking with Pastor Haskell Martin from Exciting Living Word Fellowship in Anderson, Missouri, one of the greatest churches in this country as far as I'm concerned. We love it at Exciting Living Word, and, and we love the people there, and we love our pastor. Amen. And he's, he's sharing some things with us. He just returned from a six-week trip in the Philippines. And, and, uh, and like you said, I know you minister to other ministers and yeah. other people all o all around the world really yeah. several different countries yeah. uh, that you do internet ministry such yeah. with and and all and yes. god is god is doing great things and just like he said he desires to do it right here mm -hmm. not only just america but in poplar bluff missouri yes. right here in our hometown yes. where we live he wants to move every sunday morning god has a plan yeah every sunday evening every wednesday yes. evening every time you go into the church house he has a plan to move in that service. And if we would begin to allow him to move in that service, we would see some changes throughout the week. Mm -hmm. 
in our lives and on our jobs and with our family and our children and such. Amen. I believe that. And, and, and the hunger, I, you know, I, I've been in several different countries, some with you, mm-hmm. Philippines yes. over yes. there with you and, and uh, different places. Lisa and I have traveled over the years and, and there is such a hunger. Yes. And, and, you know, please understand when I say this, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to down America no, or the no. churches in America at no. all. Please understand. No. I'm just saying the hunger is so tremendous when you get outside of this country. Yes, yes. And, and yes. you know, the only thing that we can revert back to is the fact that we are blessed. That's Absolutely, right. God has blessed us. That's right. But so often do we take that blessing for granted. Yep. So often do, yes. we, uh, do we just assume that it's always going to be here mm-hmm. and we don't have to do anything about it because mm-hmm. he's already blessed us. Mm-hmm. Where they may not have experienced the blessing that America has experienced yet. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as like you said, you know, all of them don't have automobiles. No. They can't go out and get in their car and yep. drive to the store or yep. wherever they want. They don't have the abilities and, and the, the, the finances and the things that we have mm-hmm. here in America, the churches even, mm-hmm. uh, that we have. But what they do have is faith in God. That's right. You That's know? right. They have a hunger yes. for the things of God. Yes. They're, they're, they're crying out. And and they, it's it's easy to go in there and minister because they're pulling on you. Yeah, yeah. And there's great Philippine ministers. There's great American ministers. There's great ministries all over the world. And you know, I want to see. I want to see our nation return to God. Amen. Yes. I want to see the United States of America, as it is is it's said in the Pledge of Allegiance, one nation under, under God. God. Yes indivisible what's happened is the churches have become in competition with one another yes. there's so much proselyting going on in the churches today when the sinners out there are needing jesus Amen. they're dying and going to hell and we're not telling them Amen. about jesus Amen. we're not reaching out to them they're a lost and dying world out there that needs to have what we got yes but we're not willing. we we have the power but you know we hoard it Amen. we hoard it Amen. you know as we all know, we're in election year. Yes. You know, and and we know that the country has been split. Yes. Right down the middle with yes. all of these things going on, and and such and and uh, you know, regardless who gets in that office, yes. I believe what you just said. Yes. I believe we are going to see America come back. Yes. According to Scripture. Yeah. You know, I, I do believe that as as terrible as it looks and, and appears today. Yes. Uh, I believe there is a day coming soon. That things are going to change, whether yes. that's with Hillary or or Trump, doesn't yep. matter to me. Yep. You know, I'm just saying that I believe it's going to change, and and we are going to watch the church come back up. Yes. One more time. Carmen, the the singer, sings a song. What America needs is Jesus, right. and it's not about Democrat. It's not about Republican. It's about Jesus. It's about building the kingdom of God. Yes. And people tell me. I'm going to vote for the party that I voted for for many years. And I said, you better be praying and seeking God. Amen. Because we're to pray for those that are in authority. We're to bring our nation back to God. We're to stand on God's word and declare and make God's word final Amen. authority. Yes. If we don't do it, then we're going to stand before God to be judged for it. Amen. And and I think about this. And I said, Lord, I don't want to be judged for not doing your word. Amen. I want to hear you say, well done, thou good and yes, faithful amen. service. Enter thou into the joys of the Lord. Amen. We have the ability. We have the means. God has given us his word right here. Yes. His word is what the universe is framed upon. It's the foundation of the universe. Should it not be the foundation of our lives, amen. of our churches, of our ministries? Amen. If it's not, we better return to God. Amen. We better repent and return to God. Amen, Pastor. I, I totally agree with that, and and uh, uh, I, I believe tonight, uh, I, I believe that, that there's a word that's about to be shared with you in just the next segment. We're fixing to take a, a quick break, and in just the next segment, I mean, we're going to come back, and Pastor's going to share a word uh, with us tonight, amen, about raising spiritual sons. You know, it kind of goes along with, with what we're talking about, you know, because we have to have the leaders, 
You know, we have to have the, 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 the sons of God, and that doesn't just limit it to men, uh, but we do have to have the leaders and, and raising yes. spiritual sons and children, yes. uh, teaching them and training them. And I know that's what you're doing over there in the Philippines. Yes. I, I know that's what you're doing yes. in, uh, across the world yes. uh, with your ministry and such. And, and so don't go anywhere. we got Holly Garces coming up right now with Kingdom Truths for Today. I know you're going to be blessed. We love Holly True. Or Holly Garces. She used to be Holly True. Yes. I've known Holly since she was a little bitty girl, and so it's hard for me to get Holly Garces in there. But anyway, it's, it, it, you're going to enjoy it, I know, tonight. Amen. We're going to be right back in just a moment. Hi, guys. It's Holly Garces and with Kingdom Truths for today. And this week, we're going to be talking about being an honorable husband. This whole month, we're going to focus on being mighty and honorable men. So today, I could not imagine having anyone by my side than my honorable husband, Mr. Junior Garces. So I'm happy you're here today, babe. You look so cute. Happy to be here. <laughs> I'm good. He's kind of nervous, but that's okay. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to ask him a few questions since I'm clearly not a man and I'm not a husband, so I'm going to ask him all the stuff. So, babe, what is your definition of being an honorable husband? Well, uh, my definition of being an honorable husband would be um, just putting all of your needs before mine. And, I mean, like physically, spiritually, emotionally, in every way possible. And just letting God lead us wherever, you know, he takes us. And that's why I'm in love with him. <laughs> How do you stay honorable? You know, it's hard to stay honorable in a world where porn is easy to get at a touch of a phone or, you know, it's ha women are half, you know, dressed. I'm going to be honest. They look like street walkers half the time walking through the mall. You know, it's easy to take a glance or it's easy to, you know, cheat on your wife. It's easy to even cheat on God with your relationship with God. So how do you stay honorable? Well, uh, you know, a lot of times... Uh, one of the main things that I do, you know, stay in prayer. You can't um, be strong spiritually if you don't have a prayer life. Right. So that's number one. And number two is I always think about you. Aww. So, I mean, you know, a lot of times, you know, when guys are, you know, walking or walking to the mall or whatever, and they see a woman, a lot of times the first thing they do is turn around or they glance or look. Right. And, um, you know, and it's it's I won't say it's natural, but a lot of times it's not natural, right? Because you know that's just our being of a man is to want to turn around and look, and uh, you know a lot of times you know God just reminds me of you know don't do that you know you right. shouldn't do that, right? <laughs> so oh, good. And let's see, where do you find your strength to be honorable? And what has been an influence or something that has pushed you to be the honorable man that you are continues to push you to become more honorable? Well, I find my strength from ultimately God, but just the examples I have in my life, like my own dad and watching, you know, grow up how he treated my mom and, you know, and before I was even born, he wasn't that honorable husband. You know, they went through things and they, you know, he did things that wasn't right but just watching as I was you know growing up how he would pray and how he would you know run our family and treat my mom and treat us you know was just such love and and um, I knew only that love could come from God right so that's you know one of the main examples I have in my life that's awesome and one last thing what is something that you would like to share with the newlywed husbands. We've only been married for a year, and I know you've had to learn a lot putting up with me and putting up with my cooking and putting up <laughs> with my tantrum spells. So what is some advice that you have for the men out there to be honorable or just how to balance being an honorable man, being an honorable husband, and being an honorable Christian? Um, I would definitely say um, be steadfast because in the early season, it's going to be tough. Yeah. You know, there are things that's going to happen that you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to lead, you know, us, you know. And right. oh, the only one who can lead you at that moment is God. Right. So just rely totally on God Amen. at that moment because, you know, a lot of things are going to come. A lot of things are going to happen. You're going to have fights. You're going to have arguments, whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, you're married to 
I, like I'm married to her, so at the end of the day, I want everything to be a hundred percent perfect right. between us two. Amen. So I love that. Well, guys, I am so thankful that you have joined me this week. I am so thankful for my very handsome special guest, and I pray that you guys, if you're struggling with your marriage, or if you're a man struggling with staying pure in your mind and having eyes only for your wife, you know, I hope that this encourages you to become like Christ, you know, love your wife as Christ has loved the church, you know, that's in the Bible, so you have to first love God in order to love like God, so I just pray that you guys get strength from this, get encouragement from this, hope you guys have a great week. Hi, I'm Naomi Deaton, and you're watching Kingdom News Now, and it's time to testify. Welcome back to Kingdom News Now. I know that you just enjoyed uh, Miss Holly Garces with Kingdom Truths for today. Uh, she is a, a, a powerhouse. We yes, love to is. listen to her and, and watch her, and, and she just don't mind doing anything. She'll step out. She's bold. Amen. We like that about her. But but we've got Pastor Haskell Martin sitting here in the program on the program with us tonight and, and so glad to have him back with us. It's been quite a while since he's been on the program with us and we see him pretty often but hadn't had <laughs> you on the program in a while and, and so it's good to have you back. And we're talking a little bit tonight. We're gonna be talking about throughout the month of June, we're gonna talk about men of honor. And we're gonna talk about fathers and dads and leaders and who we're supposed to be in God. Uh and so uh, if you have a son that you're believing God for, if you have a husband that you're believing God for, I want you to tune in each week to Kingdom News Now as we share these things. And even if they don't watch the program, you hear it, you watch it, you get the word on the inside of you and begin declaring over their life, over your son's life, over your husband's yes. life. Uh, and, and, and we will watch, you will watch, and we're going to watch it with you by the Spirit, amen, what God will do in their life, amen, by you, amen, speaking the Word of God over their life, amen. Men of honor throughout the month of June, talking about mighty men of God and the making of a mighty man and, and the making of a leader. And I want to begin with the Scripture tonight, Pastor, uh, from Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Uh, it says, Now Jericho was securely shut up, because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty men of valor. Mm -hmm. Now, valor means honor with integrity. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and uh, uh, you know, mighty men of valor, meaning bold men of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and yes. Uh, uh, so I want, us, I want us to talk a little bit about men of valor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can go over to the next chapter over in chapter 8, verse 3. And, and we know this story. Probably most of us know it through the word. But chapter 8, verse 3 says, Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up against Ai. And Joshua chose 30,000 mighty men of valor and sent them away by night. 30,000 men of valor. Mm -hmm. Can we find 30,000 men of valor today? I truly believe so. I, I think probably what's going on is that they're they're holding back for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. But God is is raising up men that will become the men of valor, Amen. and it's not going to happen overnight. Amen. Uh, I'm uh, the military. I was in the United States Air Force years ago, and I I learned a lot of things. I was raised in a good home. It wasn't a Christian home. My parents weren't Christians. I wasn't raised as a Christian. But I learned a lot in the military. But one of my favorite men in the Bible is Joshua. Yes. Joshua was a, a second in command to Moses. Not much is said about Caleb, but Caleb was a mighty man of valor also. Mm -hmm. yes. And we was talking earlier how that they sent 12 spies into mm -hmm. the land of Canaan, Numbers 13. Ten came back with a ba bad report, but two of them came back as mighty men of yes. value, encouraging the people, let's go do it now. Amen. But the sad thing about it was is they people, the people listened to the ten b with the bad report. Mm -hmm. But I want to, in, in, I think it's verse 2 in Numbers 13, God spoke through Moses and said, I have given them the land. Yes. Here in, in chapter 6 of Joshua, and, and the, and the, he said there to Joshua, I have given into thine hand Jericho. 
That's past tense. Amen. As far as God was concerned, everything was already done. Amen. Everything was already complete. All they had to do is go do it. Yes. But what happened? When they come out of the land of Canaan, they brought forth the fruit. Oh, it's a, it's a great land. Oh, mm -hmm. But we're as grasshoppers. Men, listen to me. You're not as a grasshopper. Amen. That's right. You're as a mighty man of valor. You may not have come forth as a mighty man of valor yet, but inside of you, by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God, is a man that's crying out, yes. come forth, come forth by the Spirit. Amen. And, and God, is, God is anointing men to do this. You, you come into the body of Christ as a recruit. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to become a basic soldier. Then you become a soldier. Then you go into tech training. And God spoke to me the first of this year. I'm calling you to raise up warriors to go forth and do battle. Mighty Amen. men of valor. Yes. People that will not go AWOL. Men that will not go AWOL. Men that will take a position of authority. First off, in their own lives. Then second off, in Amen. their families. And I like what Joshua said. I believe it's in Joshua 26, uh, verse 24 to 14, somewhere in there in 26th chapter. He said, as for me and my house, yes, we will serve, serve the serve Lord. The Lord. Amen. But you haven't done that. Some of you haven't done that. Some of you haven't made that decision. Me and my house will serve the yes. Lord. And when I found out about that years ago, I've been, I've been in the ministry as a pastor for 34 years. I've been in the body of Christ going on 43 years. But when I found that out, I began to make the, the bold confession, as for me and my house, we will serve yes. the Lord. But you know what? It came with me. I will serve the Lord. Amen. No matter what anybody says, I will serve the Lord. And you're going to have to do that. If you're a man pleaser, quit pleasing man Come and on. begin to please God. Amen. Support your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Encourage your pastor. Do everything you can to help your pastor. Pastors, uh, one man told me, he said, you can tell the difference between a, a harling and a pastor. And I said, how, how, how can you do that? He said, because the harling will step over the trash that's in the floor, but the yeah. pastor will reach down and pick it up. Amen. Don't let your pastor go through and pick up all the paper and all the trash in the floor. You go before him yes. and pick it up. Amen. And then God will begin to prepare your heart. I've had some of the best pastors that are not well known. But my pastors were mighty men of God, Amen. and I thank God for them Amen. today. You mentioned you mentioned just a moment ago about Joshua, and as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had a thought when you said that, and that is that there's so many men, and not just men, yep. but we're talking about men tonight. Yep. There's so many people uh, who says, I want my family to serve God. Uh-huh. You know, but they're not willing to do it. But that's what you said. You know, you had to determine in your heart yeah. you're going to serve God. That's right. You know, that's and right. then when the when the leader, when the husband, when the man yes. of the house makes yes. that determination, yes. something in the spirit takes place. Yes, something happens. Something happens. Something happens in the spirit realm. It brings in the presence of God to fill that home with that. Whenever I, my wife would not compromise with me. She's mm -hmm. gone on to be with the Lord now four years ago in March the 7th. But she would not compromise God's right. word with me. She stood her ground. Wives, stand on God's word yes. for your family, for your husbands. Husbands, become the man that God wants you to be and cause your family, begin to speak God's word. Begin to, you as the man of the house, begin to plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. Over yourself, over your wife, over your children, over your home, over everything that concerns you. Take the blood of Jesus Amen. and apply it on a daily basis. I began to do this several weeks ago. I repented because I had not been doing it. I repented before God. I said, God, forgive me. I began to repent before God and begin to apply the blood of Jesus over that. The blood of Jesus was shed for us. And people say, oh, that's just too gruesome. That's too gruesome. Mm -hmm. Just some people... Jesus was on, not on a picnic on the cross. Amen, that's right. He died. He shed his blood for us, and that blood has as much power. Amen. And God is raising up men that will make this statement, I will serve the Lord, and as for me and my house, yes. we will serve the yes. Lord. Once you make that decision, things will begin to happen, but you can't compromise Amen. God's word. Amen. Amen. Listen, listen to him, men. Amen. Make that decision tonight. We're going to give you the opportunity before this program is over to do that. Make that decision. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm 
got, I have a determination. I want my wife to serve God with me, and she yes. does. But even if she chose not to, yes. I'm still going to serve God. My mind is made up. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody can change that. That's right. Satan doesn't have enough power in hell to change your mind if you have a determination that you're going to serve God. Mm -hmm. I made the decision years ago that I will not back down. I will not back up. I will not give in and I'll not give up. Right. And when you do that, immediately Satan will come to test you. Yes. He's going to test you. How sincere are you with that? That word that comes out of your mouth, he's looking to see, okay, we will find out. Mm -hmm. Once you make that stand, then you've got all the forces of, of God to support you in that. You've got from Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, the, the angels which are ministering spirits for the heirs of God. Right. They will support you. The angels are ministering spirits for us, not to us, and keep them busy. Yes. Keep them busy ministering God's Word to your family and over your family Amen. like that. Let the Holy Spirit rise up inside of you and begin to speak to you. Yes. But notice something. I've learned something also a few years ago. When two people are talking, no one gets anything out of it. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes. I've learned to say, Holy Spirit, I'm going to listen to you, and I'm not going to speak. Amen. And he'll begin to speak to me. Amen. He'll begin to tell me things. And I'll think, sometimes I think, I wish I hadn't listened to you. Now I've got to do something with that word. <laughs> but you know, people, once you make that decision, men, once you make that decision to be not only a forgetful hearer of God's word, but to be a doer, doer of God's right. word, then he goes ahead and then he says, be a work. Amen. Do the work of the ministry. Every person in the body of Christ has a ministry. Every man has a ministry. Your Amen. first ministry is to your family, not to everybody else. I've had young men tell me that was raised in a pastor's home that my dad would go to the pulpit and preach one thing and go home and live another. And I said, let's pray for your dad right now. Pastors, you're men of God. Become that man of God. Don't compromise God's word. Don't give in to people that want to change the word. Always follow God. Amen. And God will honor you. God will reward you. God will strengthen you. And God will cause your steps to be ordered Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want, us to, I want us to talk just a few minutes to, uh, in this set uh, tonight about spiritual sons, mm -hmm. raising spiritual children and mm -hmm. sons. And now, now, Lisa did a program back earlier in May talking to some moms and talking to some ladies about how to raise spiritual daughters. Uh -huh. In fact, I believe Pastor Sandy Mick from Recycling Grace uh, Church right here in Poplar Bluff was on that program with her and, and, and spiritual daughters and such. And we want to talk just a little bit tonight about, about that on how to raise, how do we go about, you know, we know how to raise a son. Well, some <laughs> folks know how to raise a son. Uh -huh. uh, we can't even say everybody does that. Yeah. But we know, you know, we, we have that pretty well down. Yeah. on how to raise a child in the natural. Yes. Uh, but but how do it, it, it's it's something different to raise them in the spirit and, yeah. and to have a spiritual child and spiritual sons. Yes. And I know because we know the the, the folks there at East Exciting Living Word mm -hmm. Fellowship, I know you've got some spiritual sons there in the church yes. that you have trained, that you've raised up to be great men of God. Yes, yes. And they are tremendous men of God yes. that right there that hold your hands up and mm -hmm. support, and they, they keep that thing moving yes. and keep it going when you're out of the country yes. uh, doing the work for God. Yes. Amen. So I want us to share just a little bit about, about that. Years ago, there was a man from Nigeria that they wanted me to meet in Tulsa. So I went down to, to meet him, and he opened the door, Nigerian pastor. Julius Saji Yigbe is his name, a great man of God. Yes. One of, he, he became one of my spiritual sons. And he opened the door where he was staying, and he backed up, and he pointed me like that, said, you're a papa. And I'm a thinking, I don't even know you. <laughs> I never met you. I don't even know you. And he, and he invited us in. He turned around. He said, you're a papa. My wife had been ministering to me about God had placed an anointing on me as a spiritual father. And I told her, I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want nothing to do with it. But God began to minister to me. And I began to look. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I look at this. And, and Paul, Paul, the great man of God, he has. We don't know how many spiritual sons he had. We know he yeah. didn't have any natural sons. Right. We know in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 there, he called Timothy his son in the faith. Mm -hmm. 
to be called to be a spiritual father is a great honor. Yes. I see and run into so many people and hear of so many people in the nations that I traveled to, traveled to. My primary focus right now is the Philippines. And I run into so many ministers over there that's been there that's wanted these ministries to come under them. I've never asked a ministry to come under me. I've never asked a minister right. to become a spiritual right. son. I look at spiritual sons as being an honor, but I have many spiritual sons that call me dad, that call me papa, but I've taken the oversight carefully. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know about the, the, the uh, uh, culture. Right. I would ask them, we want you to be a spiritual father to us. And I said, what is a spiritual father to you? And they would tell me, I said, what is it that you want from me? What is it that you want What does from that me? mean to you? Yeah, what does that mean to you to be a father? I know what it is to be a father. I right. have two children. I have two grandchildren. I'm blessed because they're serving God. But, but they would tell me, and I said, okay, what is it that you want from me? You tell me what you desire, what you look at as a father. What is it that you want from me? And they will, they will tell me. And I'm listening not only to them but to the Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, I will be a father to you. But I will be a true father. Yeah. A true father takes the oversight. He mm -hmm. isn't dictator. There's right. many ministers running all over the world wanting people to come under them. They want to be dictator. They want the, the ministers to change the name of their churches to their organization. Yeah. And I've had pastors ask me there, if we become your children, do we have to change the name of our church? And I said, no. Why would you want to change exactly. the name of your church? And, and, and like I said, I'm honored. It's an honor. Right. They honor me, and, and I haven't asked for it. But I have a responsibility to them. I have a responsibility to be a father. Mm -hmm. I have a responsibility to be an oversight to them. I told one minister, one of my two, two of my children there this time, I said, you need to learn to get more rest than what you're getting. When fatigue walks in, faith walks yes, out. Amen. And you're wearing yourself out. You need to learn to delegate amen. authority. They're building churches right and left, establishing churches right and left there. But God has ministered to me. I'm to be, God is the example. I'm to be what God is to me as a spiritual father, the father of the universe. I'm to be the word of God to them. I'm to be led by the Holy Spirit to them. In God's creation, in Genesis 1, you got God the Father, you got God the Son, you got God the Holy Spirit all working together. Right. There's no competition. Right. There's no competition. Now, let me say this. There's the danger of after you have this relationship established, there's the danger of one or more of your spiritual sons wanting to rise up and be equal or over mm -hmm. you. It's not going to happen. That's right. That's not God's plan. That's right. My son, my natural son, my biological son, is a, is a great man. He's bigger than me. He's stronger than me. But he honors me. Yes. What dad says goes. Amen. And, and I, so I'm, I'm very, very careful about this. I pray for him. I pray for him daily. Not just once in a while. I pray for him daily. I've got about, I think, 25 ministers that I pray for daily. Amen. That are my spiritual sons. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want to be that. It's an awesome responsibility. You have a responsibility to counsel. You have a responsibility to reach out to them. You have a responsibility to minister to them. And, and yeah. along with your other responsibilities. Amen. You know, Pastor, you, you mentioned about, number one, you, didn't, you don't go seeking no. someone to be your spiritual no, son. No, no, no. Uh, just like you don't in the natural. No. I mean, you may try to have a child, and you may have a child, mm -hmm. but you didn't handpick that child. Yeah. That yeah. child come to you naturally. Mm -hmm. And there's something supernatural that takes place when a son is drawn to you yes. for you to be the spiritual father. Yes. And and that is yes. a supernatural thing. It's not something that it's not something that every man in a church. Mm -hmm. Try to understand what I'm saying. Every man in a church doesn't necessarily 
Now, they need to submit to their pastor yes, as yes, a pastor. Yes. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he is their spiritual father. No. No, see, when I look at this, I don't just walk into their place and they ask that. Mm-hmm. I've been to several places. I may be there two or three times. And uh, this pastor may introduce me to another pastor. And I had one of my spiritual sons tell me, he took me to another part of the Philippines, and he said, they're going to talk to you. They want to talk to you. And I thought, okay. So I sat down, and and, and the the pastor and his wife, Pastora, the pastor and the Pastora, Mm -hmm. said, we want to talk to you. I said, okay. We want you to be our dad. And I said, what? We want you to be our dad. And I asked him, went through, uh, what do you expect? What is it that you're looking for? And I told him, I said, I have just become your dad. In the spirit realm, there was a birthing. Right. They were birthed. They, they become my children. They become my children. They knew me by a relationship. I administered at their church. They knew me by that relationship. But yet at the same time, there's something that happened in the spirit. And it's, it's like, like you said, being submitted to your pastor. Right. I have spiritual children. I have spiritual children all over the world in countries that I've never been to to minister at, but they they come and they say, you're our dad, you're our dad. And that's an awesome responsibility. I have to make sure that what I tell them is of God. I have to make sure that it's not of me. I'm not trying to manipulate. I'm not trying to rule them. I'm not trying Mm -hmm. to control them. I'm trying to bring them into the fullness of what God has for them. You know, when we were preparing a little bit for this program, even yesterday, uh, we was talking a little bit about this, and I shared with you, you know, my dad. Uh, you Well, before I say that, you mentioned even just a few moments ago about the discipline. You know, you have to discipline them. Yes. You have to correct them. Yes. That's not an easy thing to do. No. Number one, they're not your flesh and blood. No. You know, no. we have, we have, uh, that's easier to correct our flesh, our own flesh and blood mm-hmm. sometimes than it is someone else's flesh yes. and blood. Yes. Uh, you know, but, yes. but as a, as a spiritual leader, as a spiritual father, mm-hmm. not just a leader, mm-hmm. but a father, mm-hmm. that father figure sometimes requires correction. Yes. Just like a natural father does. Yes. And, you know, I would, I, this is what I shared with you yesterday. You know, my dad, if he was alive today, would be 99 years mm-hmm. old. Now, he passed away several years ago. Uh, but but even if he was alive today at 99 years old, yes. if he corrected me on something, yes. I would receive that correction. That's right. That's right. Because of who he is, because yeah. of that respect for him. Yes. Uh, I would receive that correction. Yes. I might not agree with it. I might not like it. Yeah. But I would I would respect it. Yes. And and so, as spiritual sons, now I you know I know we both regard Lisa and I as your spiritual children. Yes. yes you know, you yes, are your spiritual father yes, to us. Yes. And and you lead and direct us and sometimes you haven't always told us what we wanted to hear. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you just haven't, you know. Yeah. And, and but but we understand yeah. that. Yes. That we have to accept that. Mm-hmm. You know, just like our old earthly father would. Yes. We have to accept that because number one, you're looking out for us. Yes. yes. You know, you've got our best interests at heart. Yes. And and just like any spiritual father, yes. any father should have for their for their mm-hmm. child, you have our best interest mm-hmm. at heart as well. Well, First Corinthians chapter four, I was mentioned a while ago, it says uh, in verse fifteen, for though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet not many fathers. And then, like I said, we don't we don't know how many sons Paul had, how many referred to him as their spiritual father, and. The person that is going around looking for sons, asking people to submit to him and his ministry, is dangerous. Right, yes. And, and I've never asked for this, but yet at the same time, I accepted that because I knew in my spirit, even after two prophets had prophesied mm-hmm. to me about this, tr- proven prophets that I trust with my life, they had prophesied about this. And I didn't want to receive it. But yet the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me about it. But yet at the same time, I have spiritual fathers. Yes. And I have three of them that I listen to. And, and like I said earlier, Pastor Curtis True, I look at him as in a sense of a spiritual father because he texts me. He encourages yes. me. I'm praying for you. And I look at him like this. And I draw on him like sure. this. Why? Because that man loves me. Mm-hmm. That man strengthens me. And, and uh, I've never told him he's my spiritual father. But if you're listening today, you're one of my <laughs> spiritual fathers. So get a hold of it, Amen. you know. But Amen. 
there's too many people, too many ministers that are looking for control. Mm -hmm. Those men are dangerous. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you from my heart. Those men are dangerous. Yeah. Find someone. Pastors, you need a pastor. You need someone that you can confide in. Mm -hmm. You need someone that you can talk to. You need to someone that you can receive counsel from. You need to submit yourself as a spiritual son to someone that will care about you, mm -hmm. someone that will talk to you, someone that will be honest with you. There's a man in our area that was helping us part uh, to establish the church at least once a year. He's a prophet of God. I say, I want you to come. I want you to minister. I want you to judge the church. What he says to me, I listen to. He judges the church, and, and he says, this is a strong church. But if he said, there's some things you need to correct, I would be correcting them like that. Amen. Amen. We're going to take another quick break real quick, and we're going to be right back in just a few minutes. We're going to pick this back up right here where we've left off. Amen. Talking about spiritual sons, how to raise spiritual children and, and such with Pastor Haskell Martin. Amen. Don't go nowhere. We're going to be right back. Plain to see, time is getting shorter. Anyone can tell this world cannot stand. For the things that God created in their beauty are now being destroyed by mortal man. Oh, but God. He's going to raise him up a nation Who will delight in him and do his perfect will And my friends, I feel the time is drawing nearer When we shall see our Savior as he is Oh, but until then I'll lift the name of Jesus Until then I'll lead a lost sheep to the fold I'll tell this world that Jesus lives He still saves and He still heals And you can still find sweet refuge for your soul Any day now I'm going to move to my new mansion Custom built by Jesus Christ The King of Kings When we gather round that throne With our sweet Savior We'll sing songs That the angels cannot sing Oh, but until then I'm going to lift the name of Jesus Until then I'll lead his lost sheep to the fold I'll tell this world that Jesus lives He still saves and he still heals And you can still find sweet refuge for your soul Oh, but until then I'm gonna lift the name of Jesus Until then I'll lead his lost sheep to the fold I'll tell this world that Jesus lives He still saves and he still heals And you can still find sweet refuge for your soul Yes, you can still find sweet refuge for your soul. Hi, I'm Greg Gilberto. I'm pastor of the North Point Nazarene Church, and you're watching Kingdom News Now. It's time to testify. 
Welcome back to Kingdom News Now. I'm so glad that you've joined us tonight for this program. I trust you've been blessed thus far, and we've still got just a few minutes left. Amen. And, and so we're talking about raising spiritual sons with Pastor Haskell Martin from Exciting Living Word Fellowship in Anderson, Missouri. Our pastor, one of our mentors, our spiritual father for me and Lisa. And, and so uh, we've been sharing a little bit from the Word. In fact, Pastor, you just, just mentioned a few moments before we took that break. Uh, from First Corinthians four verse fifteen, mm-hmm. talking about having thousands of instructors, yeah. but not many fathers. Yeah. Yes. And and what's the last part of that verse read? For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Amen. The key to that scripture uh-huh. is in Christ Jesus. Yes. That that's that's the thing that that I always look at because, like I said, it's an awesome responsibility to accept the position of a spiritual father. It's not to be taken lightly. It's not to say, I've got all of these, I've got all of these, I've got all of these. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm a blessed man. I'm very, very blessed. God gives me great favor. And, and when I look at this, what God has done, I have to say to God be the glory. I want you to take just a couple minutes. We've got about two minutes left here. And I want you to take a couple minutes. I want you to pray for the people at home. Pray for the men that's watching this program. Yes. Let us pray. Father, we come into your presence today with rejoicing and thanksgiving. Giving you thanks for the provision of your holy word. Once again, sir, it is true. Everything in it is true. You have truly from from 2 Peter 1, 3, given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Father, I pray for the men today. I pray for them to become that man that you want them to become. Laying aside control, laying aside being the macho man, but becoming the true man of God as the example for their family. Father, I thank you that the anointing of God is there. All they have to do is reach out and receive that. Humble themselves under the mighty man hand of God and becoming that mighty man of God that you desire for them to be. Father, cause them to look at things by the Spirit of God that they need to change in their lives and then begin to change it in the family. Become a protector of the family. Become that man that stands up and corrects the children no matter what age they are. Father, let them know that you have given them total and complete provision. Let them be strengthened by that provision. Let them know that you're there with all the heavenly hosts and the angels of God to support them, to strengthen them, to give them the fortitude that they need. Let them plant both feet on the ground and stand tall and courageous and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and let them take the oversight, let them take the leadership and bless them and strengthen them as they're doing it. Father, I ask this today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen Amen. and amen. Amen, 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 amen. I trust that prayer I know was for you. I know it was for you, sir, that's watching this program. Amen. And and I want you to take that and apply it to your heart. Let God minister through you, even through the word that's been mentioned tonight yes. that we've that we've brought to you tonight. Amen. The word that, that God has shared with you through this program tonight. Take it and apply it to your life. Let it change you. Let 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 it let you become that mighty man of valor. Amen. That mighty man that God has called you to be. There is an anointing on you to be that mighty man. I don't care if you're even saved or not tonight. There's still an anointing on you to become that mighty that's man. That's right. Amen. Amen. Call the number that's on the screen, 573-840-8888, and let us hear from you. If this program has ministered to you, let us know. Go to Kingdom News Now. Uh, Facebook, I'm sorry. Go to Facebook.com slash Kingdom News Now, and let us hear from you. Amen. And and post your, your comments and, and everything about the program tonight. Amen. We trust you. We love you. And until we see you again, when Satan has a plan <laughs> to kick you out, God's got a plan to keep you in. Amen. Amen. God bless you. No place I would rather be. No place.
place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, than here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, than here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Than here in your love, than here in your love. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Than here in your love. 